Alright guys, we'll use our sum uh, formula for our geometric series to do some more application questions. So you guys should be quite familiar with this by now. Um, you can remember one or the other. Uh, we're going to be using one of them, but it's a good idea to know both of them and how they're used. So guys, we'll have a look at this, make sure you know them pretty well, and let's go straight to our application question. Question one's asking us how many terms of a geometric series whose first term is 100 and a common ratio, you can see that 0 0.9, and is required for the sum to be greater than 500. So we want to know how many terms are required for the series to be greater than 500. So we have to use the sum formula. I'm going to use this version of the sum formula, guys, where I have 1 minus r to the power of n, which means the denominator should also be 1 minus r. So that's the formula that I'm going to be using to this, for this one. But if you use the other one, either way is fine. Um, so guys, we know that our first term is 100, so I've replaced the a with 100. The r, the common ratio, they tell us is 0.9, so I've replaced the r with 0.9. We don't know how many terms there are, that's what we want to find. So I left n as unknown. And I've got 1 minus r, and again r is 0.9. We want this one to be greater than 500. So let's slowly find our way to get r, oh, sorry, the n. We have to solve for n, don't we? So, you can see that 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1, so I'll multiply the 0 .1, 0 0.1 over to the other side, and see how the hundreds there as well, guys? I'll divide it by 100 as well. So basically, I'm multiplying by 0 0.1 over 100, and that just eliminates the 0 0.1 and the 100. Alright, guys, so multiply by the denominator, 0 0.1, and then divide by the coefficient of 100. And then I'm going to make my left side a little bit more simple, isn't it? And if you can simplify this right-hand side for me, guys, you should probably get 0 0.5. So just simplify on your way as you go. Now the 1, I'm going to subtract it over to the other side, so it's 0 0.5 minus 1. And on the left-hand side, I'll have my negative 0 0.9 to the power of n left. 0 0.5 minus 1 is negative 0 0.5. Now, guys, to get rid of the negatives on both sides, uh, I have to make sure I switch the sign. Yeah, when we divide or multiply by a negative, which I'm doing now, we uh, flip the sign around. So 0.9 to the power of n is less than 0.5. So we have to solve for n, guys, but n is on the power. So the most ideal way is to use logs. So I'm going to log both sides just like this. So put the log function on both sides. And now that I've done that, the um, power n, we can drop it down to the front like this, can't we? So the n, just drag it down to the front. Now, what I'll do next is divide by the log 0.9 onto the other side, and then I'll have n by itself left. But guys, just remember this for me. Log 0.9, if you put it in the calculator, you'd get a value of something like negative 0.04. It's going to be a negative number. So usually with the numbers that are less than 1, we usually get log log functions as a negative outcome. So try to keep that in mind. So if this is a negative number and I want to divide by a negative number, we have to switch the sign. So remember when we divide by a negative, we switch the sign around. So we know that this is a negative number, so I change the inequality sign around like that. So now log 0 0.9 divided by log 0. Point, sorry, log 0 0.5 divided by log 0 0.9, put it into the calculator for me, and you'll get a value of 6.5, uh, 578, something like that. And then we want n. n must be a whole number, isn't it, guys? So what's the first whole number greater than 6.578, guys? must be 7. So we consider the 7 terms are required to make the sum greater than 500. 